Um, the basic same kind of thing applies. We want to make sure we align them. But subtraction, there's something that's very, very important that if you think you're going to forget, I would highly recommend that you write it down. Always subtract, when we're using the subtraction algorithm that I'm teaching, always subtract the larger number from the smaller number. And we'll talk about, um, we'll do another example on this where it's, it's flip-flopped. But always, when you're doing our algorithm, subtract the larger from the smaller. So 2.78. Okay. Now in this case, again, we need to um, put in our placeholder. Now obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot subtract an 8 from the 0. Right? So therefore, we need to look to the 3 to borrow. Well, we can borrow from the 3, but the problem is we're going to have to borrow from the 3 anyways because you can't subtract a 7 from the 3. So I go over to the next one, which is a 5. And I'll borrow from the 5, which will make that a 4. Then that makes that a 13. But remember, we had to borrow from that 13. So that becomes a 12, and that becomes a 10. Is everybody OK with the borrowing system that we have? Just keep on looking. As long as, whenever you can't subtract, just keep on going to the next one. Here, I couldn't subtract either, so I had to go to the next one. Then, again, you just subtract vertically. 10 minus 8 is 2. 12 minus 7 is 5. 4 minus 2 is 2. Follow the decimal point. Voila. OK. Now, let's do a harder one.